What's going on guys, the Inhuman Pizza, and I'm back with more Fake Rain Order. It's time to continue on in Lost Belt 3 with Section 7, Quin Shi Hong. Fun fact, for some reason in JP, he is referred to as Shi Hong D. Really, there's not a lot of difference between this. Quin Shi Hong D, I, I don't know the difference between leaving off the D part of Hong, uh, literally just means uh, First Emperor of Qin. Queen, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know Chinese. Where Shi Hong Di means first emperor. So literally, the difference is just because is just uh, the difference between calling him first emperor and first emperor of like the Quin Dynasty. I don't know if there's a huge difference in that. If someone actually knows, please let me know because I'm kind of curious as to why he's called that. Again, technically, it's not wrong. Neither names are technically wrong. They're just both Chinese uh, variations of the same same title, technically. I don't want to say name, because it's technically not his name. But anyways, yeah, so, let's begin. Man, of all the ways for the Emperor to obtain immortality, that one just didn't even occur to me. Foo foo! So after finding Neza's remains in the Shang Dynasty ruins, the Emperor must have worked out some sort of cybernetics breakthrough way back in the BC era. No wonder the technology in this Lost Belt is so topsy-turvy. So the Emperor must have abandoned the Zenrin's aspirations and found a way to obtain immortality another way. Uh, the who's a what's it? The Zenren were Taoist mountain sages, or hermits if you like, who sought eternal truth. They also perfected their bodies, thereby achieving eternal youth and life. In proper human history, the first emperor of Qin attempted to become one such Zenren through an immortality elixir made with Chinese alchemy. But as it happened, repeated long-term use of this elixir only resulted in fake, fatal mercury poisoning. Alchemy has always been a great deal more trial and error than success, no matter where it was practiced. But in this Lost Belt, the same Emperor must have given up on alchemy in favor of technology based on Neza. Well, Prince Neza's body was still created by a Zenrin, so it's not as though that represented too big of a divergence from the path. But the decision to surround human form, or to surrender human form and grant only the mind immortality cannot have been made lightly. From there, if the Emperor was able to stamp out all the dis descent in the rest of China and continue ruling the uh, resulting empire at the height height of its power. Conquering the rest of the world seems only a matter of course. Yes, well, as a mage, I can't say I approve of that, but I am glad this emperor turned out to be such a reasonable fellow. Indeed, this was a most unexpected development. I never would have guessed that a Lost Belt's ruler would sever ties with its cryptor in favor of negotiating with us. That said, what do you make of the request to examine the Shadow Border in exchange? It's definitely a risk. I mean, we didn't so much as tell the other Lost Belt factions that Zero Sailing is even a thing. The Russian and Scandinavian Lost Belts both seem to have their hands full with their own affairs. But China is different. Quite so. This empire is under the impression that the rest of the world is part of its domain, and that the Storm is responsible for severing their ties to the rest of their land. They see this situation as an unprecedented disaster, much like we did with proper human history being wiped out of existence. I wonder what they'd think if they saw the world outside their lost belt. I don't know. One of those options. Yeah, their potential reaction is key. There are several lost belts, but only one Earth. It's a recipe for the biggest, crappiest game of musical chairs ever. Since there's no way for all these different civilizations to coexist. Instead of existing in parallel worlds, they all have to fight to exist on the same Earth. So the Lost Belts that aren't preoccupied with just scraping by are eventually going to have to fight others if they want to expand their territory further. I think Curse said something about that. So the Cryptors... I mean Team A, are competing with each other at the same time they're fighting proper human history? Why would Curse choose this? We have insufficient evidence to come to any conclusions about his motives, so let us leave that aside for now. 
The salient point at the moment is that all the Lost Belts will eventually be competing with each other for survival. Right, and while proper human history may be at a disadvantage, with all its territory gone, there's still one thing we have that the Lost Belts don't. Of course, the Shadow Border. And because of that, we're still the only ones with the ability to zero sail between Lost Belts as we please, but... If one of the Lost Belts had the border, they'd have a serious leg up over the others, huh? Damn, I can't believe this Quin Shi Hung was thinking that far ahead. Indeed. Though all of this assumes that China does indeed have all the other nations under its rule. Huh. <sighs> then once Quin Shi Hung ventures outside this Lost Belt, the first move they make will be to go on the attack against other Lost Belts, rather than Kiaoda. This could be our big chance to swoop in while the other sides are weak from fighting each other, and take the prize for ourselves. I'm afraid not, Mr. Gordov. The outcome we need to be concerned about is Quan Shi Hong gaining an overwhelming advantage thanks to the Shadow Border's technology, and going on to claim the entire planet as their own. Right, if that happens, we'll be responsible for creating the biggest threat to restoring human history for ourselves. And there's no way to tell how it'll play out until we open the lid on this figurative Pandora's box. Gah. So no matter what we do, we're taking a big risk. There is also the possibility that we that they may become collateral damage when the Lost Belt began to battle one another in earnest. Still, while we cannot rule that outcome out definitely, it's far enough away that we can worry about it later. In the meantime, our most pressing concern by far is finding an antidote for Director Gordolf and Mr. Vaney Zanagi. Yes, exactly, Holmes. I always knew you had a kind heart deep underneath your gruff detective exterior. Well, I guess we can't deny that Tubby here is in trouble. If they really do hand Co over his promise, does that mean we'll have one less thing to worry about? Well, in one sense, yes. But having Co as a prisoner will create an will create other very serious problems. If anything, it only further raises the question of how we will go about settling matters in this lost belt. And then there's the fact that we still can't find its tree of emptiness. Indeed. I was surprised to learn that not even Quin, uh, Quin Shi Hong knew about it. Does that mean Hinako doesn't know either? What I'm saying if- what am I saying? Of course she does. I mean, it's her job as a cryptor to protect this world's tree of emptiness with her life. Quite so. Her behavior has been most peculiar from the beginning. Both Cadillac and Ophelia had formed alliances with their Lost Belt's rulers and shared a goal to expand their territory in the future. But here in China, the only one who seems interested in territory expansion is Quin Shi Hong. It even seemed as though Akuta was trying to hold Quin Shi Hong back. Yeah, the only thing that seemed in interest to, to interest her was wiping us out. That's true. I got the sense that she wanted to dispose of us before Quin Shi Hong started paying attention to the outside world. I can't show. Ugh. I can't tell if she's being reactive or proactive. So hey, this might be too little too late by now, but are we sure it's okay to talk about this stuff in here? I mean, Quin Shi Hong keeps an eye on all of China, right? How do we know the Emperor's not listening in right now? True, the thought of the Emperor peeping on us from low orbit is more than a little creepy. But the flip side of that is that is that's all the Emperor can do. We should still assume our heat signatures are visible, even with a, a roof in the way. But as far as audio is concerned, the Emperor mentioned that the quality isn't good, and we can only be heard when we're looking up and raising our voices. I know, because I tried yelling a bunch of obscenities at the Emperor when I was in the cockpit. Of course you did. So that's what that all, what all that stuff about old geezer, cyberpunk ripoffs, and 80s leftovers was. Oh, God. Whew, should have done a warm-up before this. My throat's not ready for this. Hmm. Anyway, having the Emperor constantly watching us at all times will get annoying, so I made this. And what is this? A stealth module for your new Mystic Code. I tried modeling it off of Robert Ho Robin Hood's No Face May King. Just think of it as a streamlined, portable bounded field. That's amazing. When did you even have time to make that? Thanks, but it's not re it's really not quite as impressive as it maybe sounds. There are a lot of stability issues and other kinks to work out. 
If the mono levels in the atmosphere are too dense or it's really hot or really cold, it falls apart like a house of cards. So that means it would be pretty useless in the other two Lost Belts we've seen. I see. But when one considers how stable this Lost Belt's environment is, it becomes clear how useful such a module would be here. Oh, it also focuses on precision over area of effect, so it won't hide you from someone close by. But since we only have to worry about long-range spying here, it should work perfectly in this case. What the? Did Zhang Yang just launch something else at us? Let's go check it out, Master. Oh, a bit of faction. Our village got a bit of faction. Most glorious and majestic Heavenly Emperor wishes to thank you for your hospitality to our otherworldly visitors. Be grateful for this blessing. Ah, oh, thank you, most glorious and majestic Heavenly Emperor. Thank you. Oh, that's a woman. Whoops, whatever. Benefaction? I remember now. They said that's what those rockets are usually used to deliver. Man, they're so lucky. I can't wait till I'm a grown-up and can get benefactions too. So, kids don't get them? Ah, oh, I bit my tongue. We do, but they usually don't work as well when you're little as when you're grown up. They sure don't for me. I say, want to try mine and see what they're like for yourself, mister? Here you go. It's like medicine. Yup, it clears your head out and makes you feel really good. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> God damn it, Holmes. Is that so? Give it here. <laughs> Remember your reputation. Rest assured, I am not speaking solely out of personal desire. Don't you think such a drug is worth analyzing? This could be some sort of technology unique to this Lost Belt that has no counterpart in human history. I see. So this benefaction isn't money, then? Of course not. I doubt this farming village even has a monetary economy. Then again, the fact that we've seen so much agriculture were, would suggest some economic activity. What if their crop shield remained a surplus every year without fail? Is that even possible? In our world using methods of agriculture with which we are familiar, no. But things may work differently in this world. I took a look at the wet at the wheat they are growing, and it was like nothing I've ever seen. In fact, I can't even be certain it is wheat. All I can say for certain is that it has been heavily modified. Perhaps this seemingly primitive form of agriculture is actually far more advanced than we have been giving it credit for. Even though these farmers don't have so much as a single tractor, perhaps their methods are so advanced they have no need for machines. Why don't you analyze the wheat along with that shady drug then? You might just learn something. I cannot say that the wheat is nearly as interesting as the drug. But now that we no longer need to look for Ko, I suppose I could spare the time. Hey, yo, isn't that uh, Quinn Shi Hong's... Uh... Hi there, the engineers just went on break. That vehicle is like your home away from home, right? I'm so sorry you can't use it during our investigation. Are you finding everything to your liking in our camp in the meantime? Oh yes, it's very pleasant here. The air is so clean and fresh, too. It's so nice to have a place outside our vehicle where we can relax. We didn't really have that in the other war, the other places we've been to. Foo -foo! I'm glad to hear it. All right, I haven't introduced myself yet. Quinn Liang Yu, a general of the Empire. Quinn Liang Yu. Hmm. Uh, that is who? I don't know Chinese history. In proper human history, she existed about 400 years ago. She's famous in China for being the only female general in recorded history. That aside, the fact that you are still alive in this day and age is a great surprise to us. Did Quin Shi Hong make you immortal too, by any chance? Of course not. I was just permitted to sleep in Mount Li after my accomplishments in the Bo in the Bozho Rebellion. Here in the Empire, any warrior who makes a name for themselves is put to rest in times of peace and is only awakened again when they are needed. So you employ cryogenic freezing. Then I presume there is no need to keep a standing army there, here. Was Zhang Yu frozen in Mount Li too? Zhang Yu? Ah, I see. You call that thing Zhang Yu too. That thing? No, that thing is just a valuable relic. 
It's one of most glorious and majestic heavenly emperor's most impressive accomplishments, which is saying a lot. It's both one of the cornerstones of this internal empire and a monument to it. But as you can see, it's not a living soldier. You could say it's the ancestor to the mechanical army. So Quin Shi Hong's army is compro com God, words. composed of those dolls. And you, commanders, from the past were unfrozen in order to lead them. Of course. I'm also told that the royal guards in Zhang Yang are always assembled from soldiers of the current era. I've even heard that some elites have received instru instruction in Sage Arch from Most Glorious and Majestic Heavenly Emperor in person. But Quin Shi Hong has no need to keep a full army on hand at all times. The mechanical soldiers are more than sufficient, and the generals needed to lead them can always be summoned from their quarters in Mount Li. It's been a long time since I was frozen myself, and I'm also told there hasn't been any sort of disturbance for the last hundred years. So you're saying war has been eradicated from this world? Even when I was a young girl, war was only ever something I read about in history books. I mean, wars can only be fought between countries, right? But there haven't been any countries besides our empire for over 800 years. The only reason I took up the spear was to help put down rev uh, revolts. When Quin Shi Hong had achieved dominion over the world by the 13th century, we started implementing gunpowder well before any other country, so no nation was able to oppose us. The discovery of the Fusang tree was a big help too, as it helped us make huge leaps in our medical science. It's all thanks to the most glorious and majestic heavenly emperor abandoning mortal flesh in favor of a holy, undying vessel. The fuck's a Fusang tree? I'm told it's the embodiment of the sage's secrets, a treasure trove of hidden mystic wisdom. Others know it as the tree of life. That didn't help me anymore. <laughs> don't know Chinese history or mythology. Most glorious and majestic heavenly emperor discovered it while searching the sage world for the secrets to immortality. Does that mean Quin Shi Hong really did manage to become a sage? No, most glorious and majestic heavenly emperor had already achieved immortality through the holy vessel before discovering the Fusang tree. They say the emperor chose to remain in metal form rather than ascend to the heavens because it was a better way to lead the nation. Still, it took over 300 years to complete the search, and it wouldn't have been possible without abandoning the shackles of mortality. In the end, the Emperor decided to use the Sage's knowledge of medicine to improve the people's lives. With all manner of disease, hunger, and pestilence eradicated, and our soldiers' strength enhanced through elixirs, no other country's force stood a chance against us. Sage art-based biochemistry, huh? That reminds me. Isn't this a rather unnecessarily large plot of farmland for this number of residents? You think? I suppose everyone does have their hands full during the harvest. But the wheat grows on its own the rest of the time, so it doesn't seem like too much work to me. Is that so? I do beg your pardon. I merely thought that all this wheat might result in quite the surplus, given how many people live here. Perhaps you take more than half of the harvest as a form of taxation? Of course. Everything the village can't eat is taken to Zhang Yang. I see. Then I suppose Zhang Yang must be an immensely populous city. No, not especially. Now I see. I take it wheat is still only grown for food in your world. Is that not the case here? Wheat is the key ingredient for ethanol, the Empire's most valuable source of energy. Well, don't I look a proper fool. I was completely taken in by appearances, so this rather mundane looking wheat field is actually used primarily for growing your fuel source. I did hear that the world you all come from has a completely different history from ours. I can only speculate, but um, I gather the world you come from must be a cruel and unforgiving place. <laughs> only slightly a lot. Both you and that young lady are, um, I do hope this doesn't offend you, but neither of you look as though you enjoy fighting. You have such kind eyes, so much so that I can scarcely imagine you in any quarrels to begin with. Foo -foo! And yet that weapon the young lady carries looks to be so heavy and dense that even the most seasoned of our warriors would have difficulty handling it. What's more, I can tell she wields it as naturally as if it were an extension of her own body. 
that people such as yourselves have been forced to become adept at combat at such a young age. Well, that says a great deal about how harsh your world must be. Okay, look. To be fair, you don't understand the shit we've seen. I had to deal with 72 pillars that formed into one giant asshole trying to eradicate human history. I had to deal with shit that didn't make sense and maybe is canon, maybe isn't, we're not quite sure. And then I gotta deal with you assholes trying to rewrite the planet. You didn't hear that last part. 